In this video, I'm going to be taking a closer look at Capture One's color editor panel, and in particular, the advanced tab. What I like particularly about Capture One's color adjustments is that they can be as subtle or as extreme as you like. You get a huge amount of control, and you can do more with them once you've created them than you might imagine. So stick around till the end of the video to see what other things you can do. Uh, but for this example, I want to start off with this landscape shot and make some adjustments to the colors in it using the advanced tab so that you can see exactly what Capture One can do and how it does it. So I'm going to start out with an adjustment I often make to blue skies, which is to make them a little darker and a little less saturated. So for this, I'm in the advanced tab of the color editor. I need the eyedropper tool selected and I just click on a representative area of sky like this. So when I do that, you'll see that the color editor shows this kind of selection wedge. It gives me an idea of the range of tones and colors included in this color selection. One of the things I often do with blue skies is to reduce the lightness and the saturation. Just to give them a kind of colder look. Uh, sometimes I'll also shift the hue a little bit towards the cyan. Okay, so I'll stop there. That gives you an idea. Uh, now, what if I want to change a different color? Let's say I want to make the green grass in this shop, particularly the sunlit parts, look a little bit brighter and richer. Again, with the eyedropper selected, I can just pick a representative area and I've got another color selection over in the color editor. This time, I think what I'll do is I'll increase the lightness to make the grass a lot brighter. I'll also increase the saturation and I'll do what I often do with grass, which is to shift the hue a little bit towards the blue to make it look cooler. I'll do one more adjustment. Let's take these uh, copper colored leaves in the background on the hedge. They're looking a little bit unsaturated and flat. So I'm, again, I'm just going to use the eyedropper to pick a, a representative color. And let's say I'm going to increase the lightness a little, boost the saturation, and maybe shift the hue a little bit towards the red. I'm kind of exaggerating the effect here so that you can see the difference. So I've done that much in the advanced tab. Do I need to do anything else? Well, it's worth looking at the basic tab at this point because here you can select generic color ranges and make similar adjustments. But I'm going to select this button, which affects the properties of the whole color spectrum. I can experiment a little here with the hue, maybe move it towards the cyan end of the spectrum or maybe the opposite direction. It's a global effect, but you can see how you can make an overall adjustment to your colors as well. I'm gonna to switch to a different image now. This is one I edited earlier where I've made all the adjustments I want to make and I'm quite happy with the results. So now what can I do with these? Well, if you look now in the color editor, if I select the advanced tab again, you'll see that each of the colors I selected has its own selection. So now at the top of this panel with this menu here, I can, if I want to, save this set of adjustments as a new preset. I'm not actually going to do that this time because I want to show you something else. If I open this three dot menu instead, you'll see a couple of very interesting options. This one, for example, is to create a masked layer from the selection. So this particular selection I've got down here, this is for the grass in the foreground of this scene. If I wanted to, I could use this color selection to create a new mask layer for further adjustments. So for example, I might decide that this area needed a bit more clarity or a bit more contrast. This is a great way to make selections easily in Capture One based on color. But I'm not going to do that this time. I'm going to use this option instead. Save as ICC profile. You just click that, choose the name for your new profile, and save it in Capture One's default location. So why would you do that? 
Well, I can show you. Let's go back to my start image. I'll get rid of all the adjustments I made. So we're starting from scratch. If I go to the style panel and look at the ICC profile menu, you'll see that it will by default select Capture One's own profile for that particular camera. But there are others. If I go down to the other category, I can see the profile I saved earlier. I've called it bright color shift. And if I move the mouse pointer over that, it applies it. So why apply this as an ICC profile and not just as a style or a preset? It depends on how you like to work. The point about using it as an ICC profile is that if I now go to the adjust panel and look at the color editor, I'm starting from a blank sheet. There are no adjustments pre-applied. So by using an ICC profile, I've given myself free reign with the editing tools. Using a profile is like pre-processing the image with your own color adjustments ahead of any further editing. What could be even more useful though, is if you have a camera that produces a color rendering you don't quite like that you want to tweak, this is another way to do it. So that's it. That's a, that's a pretty quick tour of Capture One's uh, color editor panel and its advanced tab and just what you can do with it. It really is a very powerful tool and I think it gives terrific looking results. So I'll stop there. Thanks for watching and see you next time.